against domestic violence. Oh, and that's a challenge, my sisters, mm -hmm. to stand, yes. to stand with mm -hmm. me. Don't mm -hmm. stand against me. Mm -hmm. Don't talk me into getting hit upside my head for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And it's all right when you bring me a dozen of roses. Mm -hmm. I'm already injured. I have no way of smelling the roses, Sister Gerlina. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take us warriors yes. to get on the battlefield, yes. to stand, yes. and mm -hmm. stop help stop this horrible Amen. Yes, because it is a disease. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It That's is. why we said yesterday we have to talk about the event yesterday. Yes, ma'am. Our children. Yes. The way we react and act, mm -hmm. they're just like a tape recorder and a mirror. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. They are passing on in their relationships, and we want to stop that. Oh yes. So what I like for us to do, and we. Um, Come, let's come together like a panel. It's so much that we have to discuss, mm -hmm. even though it is a very, very sad subject. Mm -hmm. yes. But we can still find some joy because oh, yeah. we're reaching out. Amen, yeah. amen. Reach yeah. out, and if mm -hmm. we can touch one person out there that's listening to us across amen. the airwaves, yes. Yes. Amen. that'll yes. say, "I'm not safe," because yes. our slogan is, "Are you, are safe? you safe? Are you safe? Are you safe? Mm -hmm. Are you safe?" Are you safe? Yes. Amen. And if they can't answer that question, that simple three-word question, are you mm -hmm. safe? If they can't answer or if they shake their head and they don't know, you simply say the advocacy for our program is to tell them to call 911. Yes. If they have time to call us, mm -hmm. they can call us. We are available 24-7. We are housed at the South Point Hospital and Cleveland Clinic every Tuesday. It's a free community outreach we do. We do a support group. We've been there since 2011. I started this program in 2009 at my office because of a few women that had uh, got killed and because of my own personal story. I am a survivor, and which turned me into an advocate, and I was hiding in the shadows um, not letting my friends and, and my peers and my loved ones know that I was in trouble as well. But I suffered at the hands of an abuser, the person that was supposed to love me the most, my husband. So um, being a voice for this it is near and dear to my heart because I also saw my mother suffer. Mm -hmm. And it was a generational thing. Mm -hmm. She, I picked the person that I hated most. It was the person that she loved. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens with a lot of women. They, they covet what they see. Yes. Your daughters, mm -hmm. if you're in a bad relationship, your children will be affected. Mm -hmm. They will see it, and yes. they will covet that, and yes, they'll they pick will. that same man. Yes. Yes, Every time. Every yes. time. Mm -hmm. Every time. Yes. But the good thing about beyond abuse, I love the, the, the way God gave it to me because he said beyond abuse. We don't have to live in that. We can yes. change our situation. Yes. So I implore your audience. I implore Cleveland. I implore everybody that's listening or seeing this video to take the opportunity to become an advocate with us because that's what we do we're domestic violence advocates and survivors who uses our own voice and life in, in uh, experiences to impact educate and empower others like yourself like miss mm -hmm. mary like the women that mm -hmm. came to the symposium yesterday yes. we ask them to use their influence to help us with those who are still suffering in silence because there's a lot of women that don't have a voice. So we have to be that beacon of light. We have to be that voice. We also have to let them know that there is hope. That there's life after this. That your destiny is not dead because he say you're nothing. You are somebody. And we want to let you know that we are here to help you. You are not alone. And that's also one of our key slogans. That you are not alone. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is call 911-211. The Domestic Violence Child Advocacy Center. Which is a good partner. Or call us. The Beyond Abuse Project. And we'll give you some more information about that later. Thank you. Sister Gerlita. Yes. I'm smelling your energy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smelling that the flavor that the Lord has touched you with to speak mm -hmm. out about mm -hmm. this particular subject. So let's yes. hear from you, Sister Gerlina. First and foremost, I want to give praise to God Amen. for opening up such a venue as this because there is a strong need for women to be able to talk out against their abuser, no longer to be afraid. Our voices are very strong, but they're only strong because we speak up. And we literally are not afraid. That's the best it. part. That's the best part. When I am sitting 
with the women I'm sitting with now every Tuesday at South Point Hospital, it is a privilege because there are many women that when they come, they will sit in our open circle and may not want to talk. Mm -hmm. We have to be that voice for them. We have to educate them. We have to give them the necessary resources so they'll feel confident when they come back. Our table has a plethora of information. We may not be able to allow them to take everything home with them because we don't want their abuser to literally know. When they come into that hospital, the receptionist will let them know we will have a security officer take you up to the room that we are sitting in. And what I do like about that, because it's security not only for them, it is for us as well. Amen. I am a survivor. I was abused at eight years old. Could not tell anyone, could not tell my family. But as I grew, I was able to make sure, because I have granddaughters, I do not want them to feel the fear. Amen, amen. 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 Absolutely. Yes. Can I ask a question? Mm-hmm. I noticed lately when you go to the doctor yes. mm-hmm. for yes. an appointment, mm-hmm. they always ask the question, are do you, you safe? feel safe or are you safe mm-hmm. at home? Mm-hmm. Is that something you guys uh, mm-hmm. implemented with the, uh, the hospitals and doctors? And you know what? I think um, it was some plagiarism <laughs> done Uh-oh. by the hospitals. Uh, yeah. We did not trademark that or <laughs> patent that. Yeah, we but we were the first ones to bring it out. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm glad that they picked it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it just lets us know that we are all on one accord. That we are, are in the right, you know, in the right lane. Yes. And that they are now supporting us. Mm-hmm. And speaking of the hospitals, <coughs> uh, most women, men, and children, because you know men suffer at the hands of their abusers too, mm-hmm. just as our children do, um, they have safe rooms in the hospitals. So if you are suffering at home and you want to get out, go to a, go to your nearest hospital. Mm-hmm. Go to your police station. Mm-hmm. You know, get somewhere. Let your um, let your boss know mm-hmm. at your job uh, that you are trying to leave or that something going on be honest with them Mm -hmm. so that they can get you to organizations like us and that way we'll be able to um, set up a safety plan an exit strategy and get you where you need to go awesome Uh, to piggyback on what pastor james um, commented on everybody is becoming more and more aware Mm -hmm. of this terrible disease Yes. You have to be blind as I don't know who when somebody comes into the office, Sister Mary, mm-hmm. yes. to not see, oh, you're not supposed to have three eyes, you have two. two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, your double lips and, you know, you're falling into the wall and things, so mm-hmm. we should they are more conscious of it now because like Sister Denise said, they borrowed from us, which was a good thing. Mm-hmm. Any any time you borrow, yeah. make sure it's good. Even yeah. though we were taught, as, like, we were taught as children and even uh, young adults. Me and my sister was talking about it. Come in, you don't borrow. Mm-hmm. But some things, Sister Debbie, is good to borrow mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it's just like it takes a village yes. to raise our mm-hmm. children. Mm-hmm. It takes a village to save our children, yes. adults, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. men. Yes, it's a lot of men that's yes. experiencing yes. it yes. as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'd like to touch bases on that. Uh, we were fortunate when we were at Kennedy High School. And Sister Denise, she teaches on anger management. There was a young man that kept walking past our table. So I had said to him, would you like to take some of the literature with you for maybe one of your sisters or maybe a mother or aunt? He said no. He was withdrawn. Well, after he came out of the class with Sister Denise, he said, I need this for me. Mm -hmm. And what I love about that is because he felt very comfortable Mm -hmm. because we can no longer Mm -hmm. hide and say the boys are not being abused. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are. And they don't have a voice. So we don't want to just make it appear as though it's always the women. You have to be very careful who you have over your children. Amen. You have to be very careful with them. Even on the jobs, Mm -hmm. you can tell that there's a problem. Mm -hmm. This is why our cards that we pass out are so very important. So very important. And they're small. Well, we can have that discernment 
who needs that car? Mm -hmm. And that's the premise mm -hmm. that we use as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And more so than anything, Sister Denise, we need to let everyone know that it's confidential. Because yes. we have a yes. confidential, because they, they got to trust us. Yes. Yes. Now, I'm all beat up and everything, and then I look on the Channel 19 news, and yes. you're on there talking about <laughs> me. No plug for Channel 19 now. No. But we have to stress the fact, because we don't know who is listening to us right yes. now. Mm -hmm. Yes. That mm -hmm. might want to call. Um, the phone number is 440 or you can dial 216-233-2630. We have two numbers. But if you can't get to us, go to 911. 911 is the easiest way to get help to yes. you. But if you want to contact Beyond Abuse, Mary, Gerlina, Deb, myself, or the other volunteers, you can dial that 440-342-0742. We're also on social media because that's important. Yes. We're out there on Facebook. Yes. We do Twitter. Mm -hmm. We have accounts. So we monitor those things. And you can send us a message. You don't have to post, but you can put a message on our page. Yes. But I, I want Gerlina to talk just a little bit about doing things like that on the internet because we want to keep everyone safe yes. so uh, one of the things we we teach we talk about telephone safety mm -hmm. uh, internet safety and some other things so if I just want Gerlina to just mm -hmm. kind of go through that with you and with your listening audience mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I do want to expound on when you leave your information with us on the phone make sure we have a correct phone number to get back with you. This phone number is going to be, as we said, confidential. We also had discussed yesterday at our symposium that there is as well, thank you, there is as well a phone that we were given yesterday from a hospital. There's a specific phone. This phone number is not traceable, and I was very excited about Amen. that. Amen. Yes, I was very excited about that. Uh, because a lot of people, as you just said, they don't want to be known. So we have to make sure, even with our classes, when you come in, you have to fill out a confidentiality form with information that only her, myself, and the other two co-workers are doing. So we have to make sure that your safety is first. Then there are also forms that will tell you how to prepare for your safety exit. Those two are confidential. So we make sure that we have all the information that you need when you come and visit at South Point Hospital from 6.30 to 9 on Tuesdays. Well, bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord because they do need a safe haven. Yes. They yes. need one. Mm -hmm. um, Sister Mary, yes. you're one of our... Um, Members, I do believe you volunteer quite a bit with the organization. Yeah. How how does it touch your heart to get involved in this project? Well, it touches my heart deeply because I am a survivor, and I had not told my story to anyone. And I saw the flyer in the Cleveland Clinic newspaper about beyond abuse. Um, that they were having classes. So I attended because I needed, I wanted to be an activist, but I needed to get my story out. And so I went to the class and Denise and Gerlina, they, they listened to me, they, they talked to me, they, they gave me encouragement. They, they, listening is very important. That someone listens to you when you're talking. And it it helped me so much because I had never told my story to anyone. Sister Mary. Yes. You sitting here looking like a million dollars and you're telling us that you are a survivor? I am a survivor. Praise God. And look at God. Praise look God. God. So well. you took what was meant for bad, you turned it around and meant it for good, and you volunteering and you helping women that come into the organization as well. Yes, I am. Oh, bless your yes, heart. Yes, I am. Now, how does that make you feel? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> it makes me feel wonderful that I can either help or prevent someone from going through what I went through. And if they're in it, to help them to walk out of it safely. 
Well, we're both getting teared up. I already told <laughs> myself <laughs> that uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of crying today uh, because this touches my heart mm -hmm. as well. I have uh, spiritual daughters and a son spiritually that have that are mm -hmm. domestic mm -hmm. violence survivors, mm -hmm. and to go through what you went through and to yet reach out and help someone so they won't have to experience what you experience. Yes. That ain't nobody but God. No, nobody nobody but, God. but God. Mm -hmm. To pick that staff up. Cause see yes. that's the staff. That it is. It <laughs> is. Pick it up. Yes. And go and tell somebody mm -hmm. about somebody. somebody. They can, can save anybody. And that's the whole mythology behind Beyond Abuse. Mm -hmm. Is that we were able to touch someone, another victim, because the majority of us are survivors. We survived something. Everybody has survived something. Like I said yesterday in the symposium. Um, so it, it, it warms my heart to see that the mission is going forward, that the goals that we have, that God has placed in our heart goes forth because Mary's a living example, mm -hmm. Gerlina's a living example, Deb's a living example, and there's so many other women that I can name, and men that I can name, that have taken our mission to heart. We have educated, we have empowered, we have, we have impacted their lives for them to stand up and do that self-reliance thing. Mm -hmm. We don't counsel, we educate. We educate them so they'll be able to stand up on their own once we get done. We're not going to carry them because they have to do the work themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's some things that they have to internally look at. There's some things that they have to work for. There's some things that they have to forgive themselves for. And a lot of people try to put the blame on victims. Stop mm -hmm. blaming the victim mm -hmm. for their situation. Yes. They didn't tell that man or that woman to beat them up. Mm -hmm. That's not their fault. Stop blaming them. Encourage them to get up and move forward. Encourage them to get out their situation. And stop talking about them behind their back and help them leave. Mm -hmm. Give them a safe place to go. They shouldn't have to go to the hospital if you love them the way that you should love them. Mm -hmm. Give them a room in your house. Let them put your, their bags in your house without you getting on the phone talking about, girl, did you hear about her? She did this and he did this. I knew they was going on. No. Help these men and women to get up and be able to live the life the way God wanted them to live. Yes. Yes. Free mm -hmm. and Amen. without fear. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's what they, they need to know. Mm -hmm. um, we have these cards and they're packaging the number into a number of five. Mm -hmm. There's five cards in each rubber band. And what we shared at the symposium yesterday is, look how small this is, Sister mm -hmm. Debbie. We can stick it mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, we can mm -hmm. fold this baby up and roll it like a dollar bill. <laughs> Just keep rolling it and folding it. And yes. peace and good day, my mm -hmm. sister. Yes. Because it's so small. It's so yes. small. Mm -hmm. Because of what they need to know. Mm -hmm. Sister Debbie, you're tearing up as well. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing because we have got to be, we got to be the beacon light for them because mm -hmm. we got to speak for them. Yes. 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 They can't speak for mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. yes. So, Sister Debbie, you're one of our volunteers and you're part of, you received a certificate in your training yesterday. Yes. Sister Debbie and Sister Gerlina. Mm -hmm. So, Sister Debbie, let's hear from you. Well, what I'd like to say is, is that I consider it an honor to be a part of this group. Um, when I met Denise and Sister Gerlina, they were so helpful to me Praise because God. it was hard for me to talk about my story. Even though I have been out of my domestic violence for many years, I always kept it in. Mm -hmm. But now because I've been able to talk about it, because they've led and guided, okay. I've been able to talk about my story, and it's freed me up. Praise and God. Uh, now I really want to help others Praise God. that have been in the same situation as myself. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I'm receiving from everyone that is a survivor, mm -hmm. that once you got free, mm -hmm. yes. You want to help somebody. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't want sister, my pastor always say, sister cantaloupe. Mm -hmm. 
That's Sister Watermelon. <laughs> they don't want them yeah. to have to experience this horrible, horrible, horrible mm -hmm. uh, someone putting their hands on you. And it doesn't have to be hands. We learned yesterday it's seven of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Physical. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. yes. There are seven types of uh, the seven major types of abuse, which are physical abuse, which is when they are throwing objects at you, or pushing or shoving you, threatening with weapons, hitting, punching or kicking you, choking or throwing at throwing you, and then the emotional abuse is insulting the survivor repeatedly, controlling the survivor, con calling the survivor names yelling at the survivor, blaming the survivor for everything, threatening to hurt, kill the survivor and or the children. And then there's financial abuse, which is taking or breaking the phone, controlling the money or the bank account, withholding financial information, withholding child support, destroying property, taking or disabling the car, taking the pur your purse or the keys and making you quit or lose your job. Verbal abuse is next, which is yelling, name calling, threatening to hurt or kill, degrading women in general, constant blaming, and criticizing your appearance. There's sexual abuse, which is expecting the survivor to have sex after an abusive incident, criticizing the survivor's sexual performance, withholding affection to punish the survivor, and accusing the survivor of looking at, talking to, or having sex with another. Social abuse is insulting the survivor publicly, putting down the survivor's capabilities as a spouse, parent, lover, or worker, demanding all the survivor's attention and resenting any focus on others, isolating the survivor from friends or activities, and spending money without first meeting basic financial obligations. And then there's spiritual abuse, which is discounting the survivor's sense of right or wrong, denying the survivor's value as a person with legitimate wants and likes, questioning the survivor's sense of reality, and denying, minimalizing, minimizing, and ridiculing the survivor's spiritual belief. Those are the seven major types of abuse. And Lady Gilmore, um, the reason why we put that list together with definitions, most people don't know what abuse is. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that if he's taking your purse, if he's denying you from your own paycheck, if he's not allowing you to raise your hands and lift your hands up to your God, if um, they're cursing you out in front of your friends and degrading you in public, they don't understand that that's abuse. They think that's normal. That's not normal. That's <laughs> abuse. And you don't have to live like that. So we, so mm -hmm. as, uh, as a organization, we have to continue to put these, uh, this information in the forefront because people don't realize that social and spiritual abuse is real. Mm -hmm. They talk about the first five, the the um, physical, the uh, the verbal, the sexual, the financial, but they always leave off the social and the spiritual. If you, if he tells you you can't go to church, or if he tells you you can't go to Bible study, if he, if you're in there praying on your knees and he's telling you you can't pray, then who are you to tell me I can't do that? Mm -hmm. That's not right. That ain't love. That's not how you should live. And I want your audience to know if you're living in those conditions, the ones that Mary had just uh, elaborated on, or if you didn't catch them all, call us. We, mm -hmm. we will bring you in, mm -hmm. and we will sit you down, and we will give you that information. Because our young people also, our young women, they need to know. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. They need to know because mm -hmm. there's so much human trafficking going on. They think it's okay for him to take my money. Oh, he going to give it back. No, he ain't going to give it back. He going to put you in the street. He going to have you sleeping with other folks. And then he's going to take the money in front of your children. And what do you have? You have a situation that's out of control. You lose your freedom. You lose your voice. You become visible. And what we want to let women and men know that they don't have to be visible, un, uh, invisible, should I say, anymore. So I have a question. Yes, sir. What is there for the person 
that is doing the abuse? What what is there for that person? What type of of manage anger like anger management or what type of intervention is there for that person? Because what I've learned many years ago is that hurt people hurt people. Yes, sir. So we're dealing with a person that's obviously from childhood, from from wherever doesn't know how to properly love, doesn't know how to properly communicate their feelings. Um, what is there for that kind of individual? Is there anything? There are programs out there for those um, individuals, but first they have to recognize that they do have a problem. Right. Most abusers don't realize that they are abusers. They think that this control that I have is something that I'm supposed to have. But for the, the men and the women who are abusing their families, their, their loved ones, their intimate partners, and, and guess what? It doesn't have to be a husband and a wife. If you are being intimidated by anybody that you're living with in your house, the um, Ohio Revised Code says that you are in a domestic violence situation and it's against the law. So abusers, be forewarned. You are breaking the law. But you can't get help. There's programs through the county, through the state, and at the federal level that can help them. There are anger management programs out there, but our course of action is to help the ones that are suffering. Um, we know that if they call down to the um, Family Justice Center, mm -hmm. which is ran, um, which was a project that I um, was a part of with Judge Adrian, sitting on the Domestic Violence Coordinating Council, mm -hmm. they can go and call. They can call down there. They can put them in a program. Uh, don't let it be a mandate because the judge has put you in jail and then you want to be able to seek help. Uh, seek help. <laughs> if you know you are hurting your family, and if you know you are hurting your children, if you know you are hurting your mother or father, father because elderly abuse too, Pastor, sure. is on the rise. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's on the rise. Well, the baby boomers are getting older and... Yes. Mm -hmm. And people are less patient with them. Yes. yes. And, and I can see where that, it would be on the rise. Mm -hmm. It's on the rise. And then it's on the rise because drugs and alcohol is a factor. Um, men and women are coming back from the service and not getting the mental health, um, the mental health uh, support that they need. Mm -hmm. It's so many factors to why an abuser becomes an abuser. He could become an abuser because he saw his mom and do his dad, uh, his mom uh, and his dad in that situation right. in his life. Right. So, you know, we have to watch our ear gates and our eye gates. We have to train our children up so that they will be able not to uh, put that in their spirit. At what point, at what point can you help the, the couple that, you know, she's always allowing him to to do this abuse, be it uh, belittling her or, or talking about her, um, to want to save the marriage, but sh this this verbal abuse yeah. is just getting out of hand. How do you help them? Give us some particulars. I mean, I, I know you don't tell every woman that's dealing with verbal abuse, okay, leave them. No. You know, t t tell our audience a little bit. Give us just a little touch. We don't want to give it all away, well, but first how thing, can you help her right. in that verbal abusive relationship? Well, first thing, we uh, just like Mary stated, uh, she has to know what verbal abuse is. So we educate. We educate and we empower, and we let them know by telling them our stories. Mm. Uh, then they have to have a willingness to do it because we can tell them until we black and blue in the face. But until they get up and realize that I'm in a situation that I can't handle, that he is absolutely uh, belittling me, hurting me, uh, there's nothing that we honestly can do. It has to be choice. They have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm. And if you are women, if you're listening to us, if you are in that situation where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, call us. We're here. We will not drop you. We will not leave you. We will make sure you know that you are not alone. But there are programs everywhere. They can call 211. Again, good resource mm -hmm. to get them to the programs that they need. 911. They can call us at 440-342-0742 or 216-233-2630. They can call us and we can talk with them, have a conversation. But education is key, Pastor. To letting them know 
Uh, and then we can explain and, and expound on what she's feeling. Like Mary and Debbie and, and so many other women have said, we listen to you. And then from us listening to you, we can tell you, because everybody at this table is not divorced, but they have survived. Right. Understand what I'm saying. We do have women that do stay in their marriages. Right. There had to be some sort of intervention. Oh yes. Yes. Definitely. You, you know, to to help them to see it from another perspective. I'm I'm assuming, mm -hmm. and and how to deal with this person in their in their verbal, you know, uh, abusiveness. You know, because I, I think most guys sometimes they just don't know how to talk. You know, guys are not communicators, for instance. Yes. You know, and if they were around parents who always argued or fought, they probably reached a, a point where, you know what, I ain't saying nothing. And then when they do say something, they blow off the, the handle. Mm -hmm. And I was, I, was, I was saying, dear Lord, how can you help the guy or the abuser? Let's, it could be the women, too. The abusers understand that that's what they're doing, okay. that they actually are hurting their mate. Right. Well, having conversations like that. And so, and so, when the woman comes to you, or the, or the, or the abused come to you, yeah. do you try to bring the abuser also into these type of conversations, or or do you just leave it all on the abuser or the abused? Well, no. Our platform is strictly for the domestic violence victim. We okay. we try to work with the victims and turn their vulnerabilities into victorious situations. We cannot mix the two. Okay. But if they are married and are seeking marriage and family counseling, we do refer. Because like Lady Gilmore said, uh, we're a village. We are not an island. So Amen. we do have resources. We have resources and counselors and social workers and ministry workers that will work with that couple. So we have the resources and the knowledge to get, to the, get them to where they need to go. Amen. So it's really important for them to understand that if they want, to, if they want help, get help. Call us, call organizations like ours so that we can lead them to where they need to go. And we make sure they get to the right person. Wonderful. Well, Wonderful. We're going to get right down to the nitty gritty. It starts in the home. Yes. Where the parents are, where the children are. And once a child sees these particular incidents reoccurring mm -hmm. over and over, now we're dealing with low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. When you get stripped of, you are nobody. Mm -hmm. you, you have nothing. <coughs> Our children are watching. I have experienced in my underground ministry a second grader coming down 140th and Kinsman. I know he was in the second grade because um, I had that class at Jameson. He had two little girls walking behind him. He said, stay there. I'm at the light. He said, don't move. And these two little pretty little girls, they didn't move. Mm -hmm. So I'm holding up traffic because I'm fixing to get out and snatch, whole oh, help, snatch him up here. Mm -hmm. So two lights go by, nobody moved. Those little girls did not move. And he turned around and he says, come on. Try the witch with the B word. Mm -hmm. That's what he told him. Mm -hmm. Then he looked. I hollered out the window. I said, peace and good day, my prince, president, and CEO. What are you doing? He's like, oh, Miss Lady Gilmore, you see me. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Get in the car. All three of you, get in the car. Mm -hmm. What did he learn it from, Sister Gerlina? It's a learned behavior. He mm -hmm. saw it in his own home. Second grade, you're mm -hmm. whole, Sister Debbie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you're se seven, seven mm -hmm. eight. Yes. Could you seven. imagine mm -hmm. at 17? Mm -hmm. Try 37. Mm -hmm. Unless there's some intervention done somewhere. Yes. So yeah. I put him in the car. We go back to the school. He had nothing to say in the car. Mm -hmm. I said, talk to Miss Lady Gilmore. Mm -hmm. And you know what he told me? I said, why did you do that? Was it nice? You're too handsome. Why did you do that? He said, my daddy do it to my mama every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if there is no intervention, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no education, mm -hmm. yes. no us, mm -hmm. yes. no them, mm -hmm. where does it go? Moving it right along, right along. Mm -hmm. When we were in school, because I'm a baby boomer, mm -hmm. Sister Maria Gracia wasn't no joke. You sit up there and act like you don't have good sense in that class. 
you're calling your parents. Yes. Everybody on mm -hmm. our street right. didn't have yes. a phone. Mm -hmm. So right. whoever had the phone, that's mm -hmm. whose number was given out. Mm -hmm. They addressed those issues, but now the school system don't have that time to mm -hmm. be on a one-on-one -on -one with our children. Mm -hmm. And when they get nine years old, Pastor, and they still in the second grade, where's he going? Or she? To the third. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No intervention. Bringing that drama. Oh, yes, it is. Label our children as mm -hmm. ADD. Mm -hmm. Start them on drugs right away. Mm -hmm. And then it leads mm -hmm. to more drugs. Mm -hmm. And by the time he's 12, he don't even want to go to school. Because mm -hmm. he can't read or write. So that we have to continue to educate. And, and in yes. um, our organization, I know it's many out there. Everybody does what they feel is what the Lord gave them to do. Educate. At our symposium yesterday, we had uh, social workers, nurses. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't think of all the people that were there yesterday. That this is where the help is. Yes. And um, what I've have done you know we all go to the little boys and little girls room oops yeah. I left these cards in there mm -hmm. oops <laughs> <laughs> or one step better these fit inside car windows pull up the window no, you can, I <laughs> it is so funny well you know it's funny how <laughs> when we were sitting in the parking lot yesterday and the guys that are promoting all of their other things, mm -hmm. the school, our children are far more important. They need to be able to have this particular literature mm -hmm. as opposed to what was on my car door. Mm -hmm. And it's so small that when I say hi to someone, I can put that in their hands. Mm -hmm. It is up to them if they do want to take it or not. Yes. But that was just a you know yeah. a scenario because yeah. we need to get this out. Well, we have a platform here. We have social media. We have ourselves. We got soldiers out there, Sister Mary, mm -hmm. and and Sister Mary or well, the the four of you guys have really touched my heart so heavily that what you all went through on a one on one, Pastor. Mm -hmm. But yet they picked themselves up and said, I got to reach back mm -hmm. and get somebody else to come because guess what? You want me to be educated? I was beat, no, I'm not me, but I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. I was beat, knocked down, and I know how you feel, my sister. I know how it hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, I got something to tell you. And do me a favor, don't tell him. See, you got to mm -hmm. get their mindset. Mm -hmm. We got to mm -hmm. get in the eardrums mm -hmm. because we're on the right and my mother used to say, sweet Willie on the left. <laughs> <laughs> and who they going to hear? They not going to hear us because sweet Willie got it going on. Yes. <laughs> and so we, we got to come up with, and we will, through the grace of God. Well, I, question, I question. Okay, now you said don't let him know or the abuser know that you've gone for help. My question is, why not? You you can't let them know, Pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, well, tell me, somebody I'm tell me why. No, I'm in the underground. He'll beat every color off of him. Oh, you went and said something. I had to go rescue well, one of well, my daughters. Well, well, doesn't that bring in the doesn't that bring accountability at that point? Doesn't he now know that there is someone that loves you and that got your back? And if you lay hands on this. On, on, on me again, that you were not only laying hands on me, but now you got somebody that's coming after you. I mean, like me, for instance. My grandbaby, uh -oh. there is a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> she don't never have to worry Thank you. about any kind of abuse. Mm -hmm. I'll go to jail for her. Mm -hmm. okay. There's a shotgun. Mm -hmm. And so let him know, oh, there is a, a, a prefla of women who have been abused that will come to this house, pull me out of here, take me someplace safe if you lay your hands on a woman. They didn't, uh, uh, what's her name? Didn't Whoopi say, touch me one more time? Mm, yes. Yeah. You know? Oh, Put yeah. that curse on that dude? Yeah. Call it purple oh, one more okay. time. You know? But mm. the, the way, um, the correct way, Pastor, if you don't mind, um, for that we teach women in order for them to stay safe mm -hmm. is to come and set up a plan an exit strategy, a mm. safety plan. Because 
Getting ready to leave an abusive relationship, mm -hmm. it, believe it or not, is the most dangerous stage mm -hmm. for a woman. Mm -hmm. Because now what you're doing, you're telling that abuser that we're going to take your power away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And most abusers, that's all they have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have power and control over that person. So we don't tell them to threaten them with us or with mm -hmm. any other organization. We suggest to them that when they get ready, we will show you how to leave and how to leave safely. Gotcha. We will educate you in the way so that when he finds out, yes. you're already gone. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's the best way because mm -hmm. what happens if you threaten him and tell him that, oh, I'm getting ready to leave, I'm getting ready to do that, mm -hmm. then you done opened up the door and gave him yeah. time to say, oh, really? Mm -hmm. yes. Now, mm -hmm. how are you going to leave past me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now you're trapped. Yes. Mm -hmm. now, he mm -hmm. got, now he has time to think. think. Mm -hmm. He has time to mm -hmm. strategize. He has time to close out the bank account. Now, this is the physical abuser. No, this it's is any abuser. Any, any abuser. Any yes. abuser. Mm -hmm. Because okay. you definitely don't want the abuser in any level of abuse to know that you're getting ready to take his power away. Because that's all they got. That's all they think they have mm -hmm. over you. Right. They think they have power over another human being. This intimidator believes that I got control, control. over you. You know, um, I, don't, I don't know if you remember her or not. Uh, mm -hmm. But she was a KZ uh, host, uh, oh, Tanya Hunter. Oh, yes. gosh. You know. Tanya Hunter was my mentor, my friend. Uh, wow. I was her intern. I did my um, internship. I did anger management for the abusers in her office. I was her program director. Wow. Um, she, when the morning that Tanya got killed, they found her. Uh, I got the first call, and I ran straight to her house. And I was able to let her. I was able to let the police know that her family was on the way, and in that way, I was able to connect her, her two sides of her families back together. Her office was in one building, and my office was in the other building. And the reason why we were separated is because the courts say that you cannot cohabitate with the abuser mm -hmm. and the victim in the same space. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Right. Because. You, it's an unsafe, you know, environment. Mm -hmm. So I had moved out of her office and opened up my own office in the next building, and she was in her building. The, um, the, 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 the she was a, a, a marriage counselor. I yes. mean, she she I remember her so very vividly, and how exquisite she was, and how loving she was, and and how she could really help you understand. She was had a lot of clarity. Mm -hmm. Is this a case of? the the cobbler which holds in issues um, no. I mean it, was that was her problem I mean she wasn't taking her own advice I mean how do you end up in that kind of situation you know most people think that but mm. abuse has no has no boundaries because you can be a maid at a hotel or you can be a PhD mm. when it comes to matters of the heart Everybody's mm -hmm. a little bit stupid. Mm -hmm. Everybody, because we let our guards down when I say stupid. Yes. Not in the fact that they have no sense. Mm -hmm. It's that we become vulnerable to that next person. Mm -hmm. Her abuser knew exactly what she liked. Mm -hmm. He knew that she liked her fingernails polished, and mm -hmm. at the end of the day, she liked a back massage. He knew that she liked to be picked up when she had a late client, so he would be sitting out in front at the office. He knew that her heart was her son, Timothy. He knew all these things, but he also knew how to isolate her away from this by giving her everything she ever desired in a wow. relationship. He took control that way. A lot of people blame her because she was the first marriage and the first black marriage and family counselor in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. They blame her. How come she didn't know? How come she didn't see? Well, when it comes to matter of the hearts, how many times have you messed up within a relationship? Mm -hmm. Let's ask that question. What's in your closet? How many people have you dealt with in your lifetime that was not the right, was not the Prince Charming you thought to be? Or that's that, right. That that's right. Hey, I, I guess you're absolutely right about that. I mean, you, you, you have that infatuation or what they say rose colored glasses mm -hmm. and you look at this man or this woman you know with rose colored glasses and everyone else can see that it's a wolf in sheep's clothing yes. mm -hmm. except for us yes. you know and, and their power is to isolate is to separate wow. is mm -hmm. to to make you think that your world will be nothing without them. And then the intimidation starts. It's a cycle of abuse. Mm -hmm. There are so many different factors to um, someone being abused. And we know the power, what we call the power will, the power 
a will is the cycle of abuse. They come and they become and they 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 be loving and they be you know and then they start off that way mm -hmm. and then they inch to you know just being a little argumentative and then they go a little bit further to maybe the financial or the social abuse and then when you look up they're beating you down yes. and they're intimidating you and they're making you shine you're shame faced it they're they're telling you that if you tell your family I'm gonna kill you because that's mm. what he told her mm -hmm. he said I'll kill you and Timothy mm -hmm. Most abusers will tell you what they're yes. going to do. Mm -hmm. Wow. Some, some tend to believe, some don't. We had mm -hmm. a young lady, her name was Crystal Waters. She died for school clothes. She was a housemaid, a housekeeper at Double Tree Hotel. Everyone knew he was going to kill her. You know how they knew? He said it. He said, your family will find you cut up in a dumpster. Well, we didn't find her cut up in a dumpster the next day when she left to go with them to get school clothes for their five children. We found her shot in the head in the dumpster. So it doesn't matter whether, you, like I said, whether you have a PhD or you have, or you're just a minimum wage employee, man or woman. Domestic violence has no creed, color, shape, form, age, or anything else. Wow. It can happen to anybody. Wow. So yeah. it happened to Tanya, just yeah. like it happened to Crystal, yes. like it happened to me, Denise, mm -hmm. and so many other mm -hmm. men and women. Yes. Wow. And I like to piggyback on that, too, because, again, with the children, you know, my heart is with the children. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because since I was molested by a man and a woman <coughs> when I was eight, it got me to thinking when I wanted to tell that story. Mm -hmm. Because of the threat, if you tell, I'm going to hurt your family. Mm -hmm. Children, when they are in that predicament, they are so afraid that they will not tell. Mm -hmm. They really will not. That's why we need to educate them. Every piece of paper that you see on this table is essential and it needs to really be put in schools. But there again, we have to wait. When are we going to get tired of waiting? Mm -hmm. Her anger management class, I, I was just so thrilled when mm -hmm. that young man came back because he heard her voice telling him, you no longer have to be this way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's when he felt open enough to come back and say, I need to have the literature. Mm -hmm. And which is a, a blessing, um, 20 years ago, um, young lady we rescued. This was her fourth time of him breaking her jaw. Mm -hmm. He would stand up in a chair and jump down in her face. Mm. So we get to the hospital and she's just all, they couldn't even do anything because now everything's gone. Mm -hmm. You know, they've taken from here and there. And I remember it like yesterday. Um, it was a dozen of roses sitting on her nightstand yes. on the set and she says, oh, Mama Lady Gilmore, you know, she talked as best as she could. Mm -hmm. She said, look what he brought me. And mm -hmm. Pastor spoke about the matters of the heart. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. When you love, mm -hmm. you yes. love. Mm -hmm. yes. And I'm ready to explode. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, really? Mm -hmm. She said, he brought me those flowers when I came mm -hmm. out of sur you know, mm -hmm. surgery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, she said, and he loves me so much. Mm -hmm. Now we placed her in a safe haven when she got out of the hospital. You know how she escaped past? Oh. Two o'clock in the morning, she climbed out the window. Yes. Going to meet him. Mm -hmm. They had five children, mm -hmm. Sister Debbie. Mm -hmm. And yes. when we found her, the grace of God, she wasn't dead. We thought she were. Because mm -hmm. he had beat her unmercifully. Because he felt like he was losing his power. Because he knew at the hospital, yes. people yes. were talking to her. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. this, this. And this is 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And here we are in 2015 yes. with this tragic mm -hmm. going on out there. Yes. So not only is it where we're here, but it's prayer. Nothing is going to take the place of prayer. Mm -hmm. Anger management, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, the education, the teaching, mm -hmm. the sisters that have, and brothers that have experienced survival. We got to be their voice. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. You said all the time, mm -hmm. Sister Gerlina, my heart is for the children. Yes. Every eight year old out there, don't let them. 
You know I get excited. Sorry, Amen. Guys. Don't <laughs> let so me let that that attach yeah. your body. Yeah. I tell yeah. my grandchildren. Yes. Yeah. Don't let anybody touch no. you. No. Yes. You tell mommy and you tell right. and and we pray that they can get it, Sister mm-hmm. Mary. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. there's some monsters out there. Oh, yes. 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 They are monsters. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. And they help was available to some. Yes. And they didn't want to take up on the help. No. But the Lord opened this avenue for us. I want us to talk about, we had this out yesterday. And it said, I want us to talk about, please take one. And i like to hear us talk about why the color is purple. Um, what you're holding up is a banner that was for um, Francis are Davis and Francis was a victim of domestic violence not too long ago. Um, we can't say a whole lot about it because her husband is in jail and is still in court. I was um, asked to come and be a part of her homegoing service. So me and Sister Gerlina uh, went in and we set up a table at her homegoing. And I also was able to do her uh, obituary program. And one of the things that I I saw on the program was that uh, it was this thing, and I would like to read it. It says, maybe I should have loved him a little less. Maybe I should have loved him a little, uh, loved me a little more. Maybe I shouldn't have believed that he would never hit me again. All these maybes will not bring me back, not right his wrongs. My life was not his to take. Francis died at the hands of her abuser, who was her husband. He stabbed her in the neck and she died and bled out. Um, The color purple for us is a symbol of people who have died at the hands of their abusers, but it's also a symbol that we are survivors and that we live. It's our voice, it's our color. It's let them know that we are royalty, that we have mm-hmm. that we have unity. So the color purple is very important to us. Mm-hmm. Also, um, uh, you mentioned about the, the children going to the doctors and stuff. I just wanna let uh, the audience know that the forensic nurses, the SANE nurses, the SANEs, uh, at the local hospitals are there to help you. They are there to give you information. So when they separate you or separate um, your child, you know, and have that intimate conversation, do not be afraid. Tell them the truth. Let them know that you're in trouble. Because all they want to do is mm-hmm. help you. And what they can do is get you the resources and get you connected to the people that will save your life. They're not trying to be busybodies. They're not being busybody by asking you, are you safe? They're trying to save your life because they see. They see the injuries. If your hairdresser sees bruises in your head, because they know. Your hairdresser, hairdressers, you know. Talk to them. Tell them Mm -hmm. to get help. The barbers, they know. They see the bruises in their scalps because the abusers have real good ways of hiding the hits. The doctors see them all the time. Teachers, you know, when that child is being abused, tell them something. You don't have to do anything but connect them to us beyond abuse, and we will help them and show them how to live victorious. Our children are dying at the hands of people that are supposed to love them, and that's not right. So mothers, I implore you to watch who you bring in your house. Amen. Yes. Amen. Daughters, I implore you to watch who you're sleeping with. Amen. Is he worth your life? Mm-hmm. Is he worth the life of your children? I had a conversation at our symposium yesterday. I saw a young lady. We were on our way to a church function. Mm-hmm. It was eight of us. And we were on our way. And this young man was dragging her down the street. How dare me not jump out the car and That's help her. right. Did I jump out the car? Yes, I did. And guess what? That coward ran. Because most of the time, they are cowards. Mm-hmm. They're afraid when somebody intercedes her in there. So I, am, I asked the men of Cleveland, Mm -hmm. of of this country, to get up and intercede and intervene. Where are our heroes? Mm -hmm. Where are the men that will stand up and really help us live? Mm -hmm. We'll say, you know what, not no more, enough is enough. Can you help us help them? That's all I ask, that's all we want. Mm -hmm. And then use your voice to let them know that they're not by themselves, that you won't tolerate the children being killed by somebody that's supposed to love them. Because guess what? 
Our children, pastors, they don't know what love is. But please educate them on what love looks like, how God looks, and then they will have something to compare to. Amen. 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 We have three minutes left for this educational uh, taping today, and it's very close to me. So I want, Sister, we're going to go around the table. And Sister Denise, we're going to come back to you with the phone numbers, the website, the emails, and all of that. So quickly, Sister Debbie, let's give some last-minute encouraging words. Um, basically, I want to say that the women that are being abused, you are loved, that we are here, that we want to help you not to be a victim anymore. Okay. There is hope for you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sister Gurlina. What I'd like to expound on is years ago, the terminology was the battered woman. Mm -hmm. Today, if you understand abuse, you are going to be victorious. Please take your time to remember all of the information that we're giving you today. We need to make sure that you hear, not only with your ears, but with your heart. We're here to help you to make sure that all of the education that we're going to give you once you visit us at South Point Hospital on Tuesdays. I can't say that enough, 6.30 to 9. And if you need more time, we'll be there for you. All right. Thank you, Sister Mary. I, I just like to say to all of the women who are being victimized, all the men, talk, be able to have someone that you could talk to, have an outlet. So that you know that you are not alone. And Sister Denise, I'm going to let you close out with the information that we need to pass along. Stay prayerful. Know that we are out here to help you. You are not alone. The question is, are you safe? If you can't answer, yes I am, then call us. Our numbers are 440-342-0742 or 216-242-2632. 2630. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're at Cleveland Clinic Hospital. We're in your emergency rooms. We're in your neighborhood. We love you and believe us, you can live beyond abuse. Amen. 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 Excellent. Did we get it in? I don't, know if we, I don't think we did. Okay. But I've been showing the information offline. Yeah. So. Okay. That was really, yeah. I was yeah. I, I thought in one minute. Yeah. Mr. Gurley, I couldn't see it. She had your hand behind. She, yeah. I, I, I was trying to show you. <laughs> he was showing one minute. Oh, and yeah.